Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Would there be any chance of a Roman miracle? With Manchester City looking to crash out of the Champions League to Liverpool, no one gave Roma a shot to come from behind at home to beat Barcelona. Would they be able to do it? If so, how would they do it? And how would Barcelona approach the game knowing that they have such a big lead over Di Francesco's men? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're gonna briefly break down Roma against Barcelona. So when we briefly break down Roma against Barcelona, you have to think going into the second leg, Roma don't really have a chance based on their domestic form this season. A bit too inconsistent and Barcelona yet to lose a game in their domestic league. However, we've seen crazier things happen. And we look at the board, we have Barcelona in the blue, we have Roma in the red, and we're bound to see something special. Uh, when we look at Roma, they were more of a 3-4-1-2. Basically, they had Schick and Dzeko up front, Nangola and Justin behind them. Their wingbacks were Kolarov and Florenzi, who are more attack-minded. And in midfield, it was Strutman and it was De Rossi. Barcelona, still more of a 4-4-2. The one big shock was that um, Dembele didn't start. They went with Sergi Roberto in midfield, Iniesta, Busquets, Rakitic, and then they went with Semedo as their right back. The ploy for Barcelona was probably to be a bit narrow, dictate the tempo of the game in the central areas to ensure that they could combat which is basically 4v3 in the midfield zone, and then hope that they could find some messy brilliance or get Suarez scoring. For Roma, it was a bit different. No one really knew what to expect from this, but we saw from the get-go what they were trying to do. And when we look at it, they started to press very high. They ensured that Barcelona didn't have time on the ball. They didn't want them to control the tempo of the game. And they weren't looking to sit back and play on the counter. They looked to play from the front foot. A bit of a risky gamble, but they caught Barcelona a good day. Barcelona looked laggy, lethargic through throughout the game. They were dropping a bit deeper when they did try to press. The pressing wasn't that good. They didn't win second balls. Their, like I said, their pressing was a bit disjointed and it allowed Roma to really sell in the game, to get at them, to win tackles. And the, when you look at it, the team that wanted it more got the results. We've seen this from Roma in the past where not basically from the front foot, they defended a bit deeper against Napoli, dropped into more of a 4-5-1. And they altered ways to press Jorginho, who was the key player in that Napoli midfield, out of the game. Sometimes it would be De Rossi, sometimes it would be Strutman, sometimes it would be Nangolan, and it worked in the second half, and it led to arguably their biggest domestic victory this season, a 4-1 victory over Napoli. Here, this is probably their best, their biggest performance and their best result of the season against the Barcelona side that some would tip to be the best in Europe, and they did it in a different manner, but still with the various pressing. How did they get that done? Schick and Dzeko pressing from the front. They had Nangolan pushing out wide to Semedo. And then what would happen was that they had the wing backs there, and this would allow the midfielders to step onto the shuttlers, and that was very key there. Kolarov could tuck in right over there on Roberto, and they never really had an out ball to play over the top. Yes, they could play it into Suarez or Messi, but Roma trust their back line of Jesus, of Fazio, of um, Manolas to win aerial duels, and Barca never really got settled into the game. There are obviously times where it varied. There are times where Nangolin pushed out wide, and what would happen was that they would have that happen right there if one of the Fords pressed the goalkeeper, and they'd have Kolarov step forward to Semedo, and that was pivotal, but everyone kind of knew their role. It wasn't always Nangolan pushing out wide. Sometimes it was Strutman. Sometimes Nangolan would be in the middle. Sometimes it would be De Rossi, but the general scheme of what they were trying to do was to press in that zone to ensure that Barcelona couldn't play out of the back, and Barca didn't. When they did drop off a bit, what would happen was that it did seem sometimes more like a 4-5-1. They'd have Florenti drop a bit deeper, Nangolan enter at the tip, they'd have Dzeko stay up front, and what would happen was that they had Schick kind of take up a narrow position. He would press Iniesta. Iniesta didn't really get into the game, and if sometimes Schick was pushed a bit forward, they'd have Fazio step into Iniesta, so Iniesta never really got a grip to the game. You never really saw him dictate or get onto the ball to play passes to retain possession. And with Busquets, who 
didn't look match fit, and Rakitic struggling to get on the ball, Barcelona were flustered. So that was the defensive aspect of how they really got at them, and it persisted throughout the game until eventually they changed systems, but we'll get to that a bit later. Now, how did Roma get at Barcelona? When we look at it, the system that Barcelona were trying to play, they would defend and they drop back into two banks of four. We knew what we were going to get from them in that aspect. So this is why Di Francesco's setup was so important because what it did force them to do was that they had to monitor the two center forwards. That was pivotal. Nangolan was trying to break deeper into the box. So the back the front, the back two that protected the back four in Busquets and Rakitic had to sit deeper and protect. That was pivotal. And what you expect from Roberto and what you expect from Iniesta is to push out wide to ensure that it's not 1v1 in those areas. That was key. And who was the key man throughout it? Florenzi. Iniesta has been a weak spot from a defensive aspect in this Barcelona side. We often had to see Busquets or Rakitic push over to that flank to help him out. Here, when you look at some of their best chances, it's down to Florenzi getting out wide. In the first half, we saw um, Fazio step forward with him, pushing a bit forward, and then Florenzi getting across. So it would force, sometimes it would be a 2v1, and that was, or 2v2, but still Florenzi was able to get crosses into the box. You look at the opportunity that he got for Schick. In between the defense, he nodded it inches wide. You look at the opportunity for Dzeko that he, the same kind of template for the attack where he got ahead of Semedo and Dzeko nodded on goal for Ter Stegen to push over the net. And throughout the game, Florenzi continued to get crosses into the box. But then you look at the goals that they scored. And that, again, is just down to Barcelona's lethargic approach. And they just looked like they weren't in it. They looked tired. They looked like they were fatigued. It's just a simple ball over the top. And it's De Rossi. And this was the thing with Barcelona. With them sitting and dropping deeper into a 4-2, four, four that's been the system that they played throughout the season. So I don't know why people are questioning why they played 4-4-2. It's what they've been doing for for majority of the season. It's De Rossi getting on the ball, picking it up. No one is pressing him. Clips the ball over. And it's Dzeko that drifts off, gets between the markers, pokes it behind Ter Stegen. That should be prevented. That is a key mistake. And then we saw that happen later on in the game. And it's it was De Rossi again who clipped that ball into that space in the second half. And the same thing happened, except that the recovery run from Alba ensured that nothing came from it. But even when you look to the build-up to the second goal, or the penalty for the second goal, it's an goal and getting to the second ball, clipping it over the defense for Dzeko. PK can't stay with him. PK fouls him. It forces the penalty. When you look at what Roma did very well, one, there was no press on De Rossi. He was able to clip diagonal balls out to Florenzi. If you think about the diagonal ball that he clipped out to Florenzi and across to the far post, saw El Shirari force a big save out of Ter Stegen. And there was another opportunity that stemmed from Florenzi getting out wide and clipping the ball to the far post. We saw Fazio on the left-hand side later on in the game clipping a ball to that same to that same flank and it was De Rossi who was in the box and he got just ahead of Alba, but Alba had applied enough pressure so he nodded the ball wide. But when we just look at everything that Roma did well, they pressed well, they ensured that Barcelona couldn't play out of the back, they dominated the flank that Barcelona struggle in because Iniesta doesn't have the legs or the defensive discipline anymore to get out wide. They ensure that they play two strikers up front to force the, the midfield pivot back deeper. And then you look at Dzeko's all-round performance. When Barcelona did attempt to press them and they did close them down, they could lob balls into Dzeko. And Mtiti and Pique had no option for him. He was able to control the ball. He drifted into the channels and held off challenges. Dropped a bit deeper, also clipped out balls to Florenzi, who was able to get forward from the right, and it was an all-round great performance. The final goal, you look at it, and what happened with Romo is that no one was sure if they would get that final goal because they did make a few changes. They brought on Under, they brought on El Shirari, they moved to more of a 3-4-2-1, three, three, and it, they weren't sure if they could maintain that press. That was the biggest issue for them because when you look at the best chances that Barcelona created with the three-man back line. It was when Colorado was a bit higher. You look at the first few minutes, ball clipped up to Suarez, lays it off to Messi. Messi slides in Roberto, who breaks into that space, for, fires a tame effort at the keeper. And then you look later on when it's just a Strootman error 
from deep and Iniesta finds Messi in that space. He turns, he's closed down. We gotta get markers back. He was closed down by three Roma players. He fires a snapshot on goal. But when you look at it from an overall standpoint, Barcelona didn't really have any chances to create because of what Roma were doing well. And even when they dropped off into that 5-4-1, there was no space for Messi to get the ball. The one thing you could say about Messi is perhaps, why didn't he just drop deeper into those zones? Obviously, there was a lot of pressing going on, a lot of tackling, but he wasn't really doing much in there because he wasn't being supplied. And when he got into these zones, at least it would force them to foul him and to kind of slow down the fast-paced game that Roma wanted to play and Barcelona couldn't keep up with. But overall, you look at the third goal, it's just a near post cro near post corner. Uh, Manolas loses Semedo, Suarez is not marking anyone and nods and tries to attack space, heads nothing on. Manolas gets contact with the ball, beats Ter Stegen at the far post, and overall, as a whole, Romo are fully worthy of the, of the result. They pressed well, they ensured that no supplies could get into Messi. They attacked the space down Iniesta's flank. Dzeko was superb with his all-round game. They were disciplined without the ball. And although there were a few mistakes that they did make towards the midway point of the second half and the start of the second and the start of the first half, Roma made the tactical change that they need to. And this was a performance that many fans will remember for years to come. But let me know what you guys think. Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.